It's now time for members' statements. The member from Huron Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to stand today to speak about Ecologics, a company that opened its innovation site in the town of Walkerton recently. The Ecologics Innovation Site is a detailed replica of a municipal water system and features over 2,000 feet of underground water pipe. The site will be used for the research and development of technology focused on water main leak detection and assessment of pipe conditions. Speaker, in addition to its research and development purposes, the site will also serve as a training and certification facility for engineers, field staff, business partners and utilities. This will enable field teams and operators to gain considerable experience while remaining under controlled situations. Ecologic's long-term plan is to have a permanent presence in Walkerton and will provide full-time employment er opportunities in the area. The new generation of trained professionals being educated at this site will be an important resource for municipalities in preventing water main breaks before they occur. The average leak in a municipal water system can last up to 20 years before the effects are felt. Mitigating this problem, then, will not only decrease its associated risk, but save millions of dollars for municipalities. Speaker, Ecologics aims to shape the future of the water industry, and I'm excited to support them as they strive to achieve this goal in Walkerton. And I'm proud to say this is happening right at home in Huron Bruce. Thank you very much. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Windsor to come see. Good afternoon, Speaker. The Windsor area has an unemployment rate of 10.5%. However, I rise today to say it's not all gloom and doom down our way. Let me tell you about the Downtown Windsor Business Accelerator and what they've been up to lately. Speaker, the Accelerator was formed four and a half years ago. It's become the entrepreneurial hub of the region. Built in an old bingo hall, the Accelerator offers turnkey office space, on-site mentoring, even free legal advice. The Accelerator is home to 30 companies, and a dozen more of the others have graduated on to their own locations. The current members have 86 full-time employees and 68 part-time. The alumni companies report 31 full and 48 part-time staff. And the combined revenues from these small companies already total $3 million. The Accelerator also provides incredible support to many of our local nonprofit groups. Their first high school entrepreneurial summit attracted more than 300 students, with a second plan for later this year. They've also started a youth at risk program where young people will be mentored and given microfinancing of up to $3,000 to start a business. The Business Accelerator created a women's entrepreneurial networking series, and more than 300 women have taken advantage of that opportunity. The economic impact of the Downtown Windsor Business Accelerator has had on our local economy is substantial, Speaker. So from the Ontario Legislature, a salute and a job well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Trinity Spadina. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to recognize and celebrate the Ontario College of Art and Design University. It is dedicated and its dedication to education and innovation. OCAD is situated in my riding of Trinity Spadina. It is at the heart of, of Toronto's art, design and new media industry. Recently, 99 projects by 74 OCAD students, alumni, faculty were unveiled at the Mississauga Office of Mercedes-Benz Financial Services. The October, 1st, uh, the October 21st opening of the exhibition titled Experiencing Perspectives was well attended by OCA alumni and Mercedes-Benz staff. This event highlighted their seventh years of partnership with Mercedes-Benz to encourage creativity and art appreciation in the workplace. OCA is a state-of-art institution with competitive entrance requirements. 17 undergrad programs and uh, six un uh, grad programs since, the found, since being founded in 1876, OCA has evolved into a champion of cross-disciplinary education and continue to integrate emerge, emerging technology for the age of imagination. I'm extremely proud of OCA in Trinity Spadina and the contribution their students, alumni, faculty make in the community. I stand today and invite all Ontarians to acknowledge the achievements of OCAT and their continued success in the arts and design industry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Go, okay. Thank you. Further members' statements? The member from Perth, Wellington. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, today I would like to recognize an example of outstanding generosity in Perth, Wellington. 
The Stratford Perth Community Foundation is dedicated to building strong and vibrant local communities. Since 2004, the Stratford Perth Community Foundation has distributed close to $450,000 to area charities. That money has been donated through 45 different funds that support all types of services in Stratford, St. Mary's, and Perth County. I would like to take this opportunity <coughs> excuse me, in response to a challenge issued by Governor General David Johnson to imagine the country as a smart and caring nation, the Foundation has created specific funds for each community. These smart and caring community funds allow community members to donate in their hometown with the funds remaining in that specific municipality. On October the 8th, the Stratford Smart and Caring Community Fund was launched and has already received an, incredible gener an incredibly generous kickstart. Two outstanding community leaders, Steve and Carolyn Ray, have donated $25,000 to the Stratford Smart and Caring awesome. Community Fund. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Steve and Carolyn for their outstanding generosity. <clears throat> so, and thank you to the Stratford Perth Community Foundation's Board of Directors and to Tracy, Roxy, and Amanda for your dedication to our communities. Next week, the Foundation is spearheading Random Act of Kindness Day, and I look forward to participating. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Welland. Uh, thank you, Speaker. It's an honour to stand today and recognize two constituents from Thorold in my riding of Welland, John Prine and his daughter Sarah. John and Sarah led a cross-country bike ride this summer to tell our governments that illegally detaining a peaceful protester and ripping off his prosthetic leg in the name of justice and security is an insult to democracy in Canada. John Prine, an amputee from a farm accident, recalls that while taking a break from the G20 demonstration, right here, lounging on the grass at Queen's Park. They were approached by officers, ordered to get up, and when John took longer than the officers would have liked, they were attacked. He recounts they were assaulted, detained in cages for over 72 hours. Worse, his prosthetic leg was ripped off and confiscated. Despite that, no charges were ever laid. No apology was ever given, no explanation even. After calls for a federal inquiry fell on deaf ears, both set out on bikes this summer for a four-month tour, stopping at police stations and MPP, MP offices from British Columbia right through to Prince Edward Island. Today, I'd like to thank John and Sarah Prine for reminding Canadians that our charter of guaranteed rights and freedoms can never be compromised and must always be respected. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from York Southwestern. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am pleased to rise in the House today to speak about a great new program in my riding of York Southwestern that will allow youth from the community access to the jobs and training opportunities that are coming with the major public transit expansion projects like the Eglinton Crosstown. My community and I are glad that Metrolinx has agreed to include community benefits agreements in all their projects. These are vital for good paying jobs for young people. The program is called I Am Eglinton and is run by the Labor Education Center in partnership with uh, Leuna Local 183 and Leuna Local 506. It is an eight week course which explores careers in the construction industry by providing participants with knowledge about the building trades and exposing them to real work in that field. This career development program is provided to eligible Ontario Works recipients who have grade 10 English and math or equivalent. Mr. Speaker, careers in this industry are not easy, and this program ensures that applicants will be successful for the real world. The third program intake will start today, October 26th, and more information on this program can be found on the Labour Education Centre's website. Participants of a Meglinton program will learn essential skills that will enable youth that may not have other opportunities the chance to pursue a successful career path. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further notice, the member from Haldeman Norfolk. Speaker, uh, Saturday evening I attended yet again the annual Grape Harvest Festival at the Delhi District Hungarian Hall Tobacco District, a European tradition that's carried on in that hall since uh, 1949 in the in the town of uh, Delhi and in what is uh, now developed the uh, Norfolk uh, wine growing grape growing area. It's a great evening. The hall is famous for its chicken, its cabbage rolls, and the event uh, it derives from the hard work of the grape harvest spanning September to through to uh, November, 
in uh, so many area people, they're uh, native Hungary, celebrating uh, Hungarian wine in something like 22 different regions across the, uh, the country. And the Hungarian house in Delhi celebrates the same way as those do in their homeland. During the, uh, the 18th and 19th centuries, once the baskets were overflowing with fruit, they'd be transported on the backs of men to the wine press, dropped into a large vat. And uh, this would have been my favorite part of the ceremony. Barefoot women jumped into the large containers and stomped the fruit. Saturday night, my EA, Bobby Ann Dronikavich, uh, kicked those grapes to juice, could not defend her title. Dan Weiss of Snapped almost put the vat out on the dance floor, but in the end, Norfolk Mayor Charlie Luke was crowned the new champion. Kazanam to the Hungarian House for the Hospital. Thank you. Ersenem Saipen. Member statements. The member from Etobicoke Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, as elected members, we're here to improve the quality of life of the people who live in our ridings. But, Speaker, when I think of the people who shape the quality of life in my community, I often think of the people who volunteer their time day after day to make Etobicoke Centre even better. And today I rise in the House to recognize the important contributions of a group of people and an organization in my riding that are doing just that the Richmond Gardens Ratepayers and Residents Association. The association reformed earlier this year, Speaker, to represent the homeowners and apartment building dwellers who live in Richmond Gardens. And I had the pleasure of meeting with the association's board earlier this year and was impressed by the amount of work that they had taken on and their dedication to our community. We discussed a number of issues that are important to the community, including the potential redevelopment of the Eglinton Corridor, potential transit in the corridor, and the future of Silver Creek School and the adjoining green space. The Silver Creek building hosts two major organizations that support children with physical and developmental challenges and special needs. Need speaker, the Etobicoke Children's Center and the Silver Creek Preschool. I visited both this year, and I have to say that I was touched not only by the children that I met, but the dedication of the teachers, the staff, and the volunteers who care for them every single day. These two organizations provide a critical service, and the adjoining green space is very important to our community, and that is why I believe it is critical that these two organizations and the green space uh, remain so that they can continue to serve our community. I'd like to thank the Richmond Gardens Ratepayers and Residents Association for, for their board and for their members for all their hard work and their advocacy, and I look forward to working with them in the months and years to come to continue to strengthen the quality of life of the people of the Tobacco Center. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Brant uh, Brampton Springdale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. According to recent news stories, parts of India are engulfed in unrest and demonstrations against desecration of the Sikh holy book, the Sri Guru Granth Sahib. This is the most unfortunate development in an otherwise peaceful, tolerant, multi-religious, multi-ethnic and law-abiding state of Punjab. One would like to strongly disassociate and condemn any such acts against any holy book or religious practices. The current state of endless demonstrations leading to violence has resulted in the loss of innocent lives. To put an end to this most unfortunate state of unrest, I strongly urge the authorities to bring to justice the perpetrators of these current act, acts of cowardice, which would certainly be termed as hate crimes. One hopes that our Canadian values of inclusiveness, tolerance, respect for each other will be re reflected amongst the people. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of my constituents, I want to strongly urge the appropriate authorities to help bring peace to the affected areas, and as well to make sure that the people responsible for these cowardly acts are properly charged and punished. This is important not only to my constituents, but to Sikhs living abroad and in Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank all members for their statements.